Hi, this is Reese from Code Consortium, and here with another ANSI C video tutorial. Welcome to episode 3, part 4. Three. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to nest if statements, and what that means is that we can take if statements and put one inside another, and we can do that as many times as we like so that we can have multiple decisions. Think of it like a multiple decision tree or like a flowchart, where for each decision, the answer that it comes out with can branch out to another decision so you can have multiple choices. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Here we have an if statement and normally put a condition in here. Uh, for example, let's create int, uh, yeah, let's have int age again, it's a good example, we like using that. And then print f, tell the user to input their age, like so. And then we can do scan f, tell it to take an integer, like so. So now we can say if age is greater than 0, then obviously it will do anything inside of these uh, braces here. So in there we could put another if statement, if age is uh, greater than say 18, then we can do whatever's inside this code example. So first, this condition of age is greater than zero must be true first. If it is true, then we can test this condition of if age is greater than 18. And in there we can also have our else statements as well if we like, and this can have an else condition like so. So if this is not true, then all of this is ignored and only this will be executed. But if this is true, then once this is executed, then if this is true, this part will be executed, otherwise this part will be executed. So let's show you what I mean by that. Let's put in here, you are above 0 and above 18, like that. And in here we can put print f, you are above 0 but not above 18. And then in here we can put you are not above zero like that and that will work so if we just save that and then go back to our compiler gcc minus o main and main dot c that's compiled successfully so if we run that if I put 0, then 0 is not above 0, obviously, so you're not above 0. If I put 18, or let's just put 17 for example, then you're above 0, but you're not above 18. If I put 19, you're above 0 and above 18. So as you can see, we can now have a, tr a tree of decisions that we can follow through. And we can do lots of interesting things with this. So what we could do is if we wanted we could put another if statement in here or what would be really cool is if we put a switch statement like this so we can put a switch statement in here so we could put case um, I don't know minus one print f you are below zero for example and then break and then case minus three uh, print f u r minus three etc so you can do a lot more interesting things with that now the thing that's important to note here is the tabbing I believe I've already gone through with you how to do tabbing but always remember that the contents of a brace say like this brace here should always be tabbed in by one extra than what the tab level was before so this is tabbed in by one so this is now tabbed in by two because it's inside this brace and the closing brace must match the same number of tabs it went in by open by the number of tabs at the opening braces this is not essential for compilation if you compile it, it will compile fine if you don't put the right number of tabs in. When it comes to reading it, it is 
ugly. If you don't include these tabs, then you don't know that this brace matches this one, and you don't know that this one matches this one, etc. If you've got lots of code and it's really big and you've got multiple lines, then it will become unreadable. So whether or not it's easy to read, whether you do or don't do that, because say it's only a small amount of code, it doesn't matter. The best thing to do is to not get into bad practices at an early point and to uh, exercise best practices at all times. So always do your tabbing, never ever uh, forget that. So our if statement here is tabbed in one because it's part of this and then this one's tabbed in one more. And the same for the switch statement. So just make sure you do that and should be fine. So now let's go back and compile it. Now when we run it, if I put minus 4 or minus 3, then yeah, there we go. It done the switch statement and it said you are minus 3 because it matched that. So I hope that sort of helped you guys on how to use the switch statement and also the if statement. And now that you now understand how to do nesting, hopefully you can make really big and complex decision trees that will allow you to make really cool and complex stuff so far. There's lots more to teach and coming up in the next video on arithmetic and also I want to show you some other cool stuff, loops and arrays. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check regularly for the next video in the series of NCC tutorials. For further discussion on programming, visit the forum on codeconsortium.com where you can post your questions and advice. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. See you next time.